Okay, tonight we're going to talk about solving equations with rational coefficients. Before we get to it, here's some vocabulary just going over some terms we need to understand before we can do this. And to highlight that a rational coefficient is a coefficient that is a rational number. So right now we're solving equations and we're doing for the whole entire week. So what does it mean to solve an equation? Well, when we construct a linear function, we're really creating what we call a linear equation. And when we use linear equations, we want to work with either some kind of x value or some kind of y value. And when we solve a linear equation, we're either looking for a value for x or we're looking for a value for y. So how do we solve linear equations? Well, if we're looking for a value for y, we just substitute a value for x and go through all the operations. But if we're looking for a value for x, we have to do all the opposite operations on both sides of the equal sign to get x by itself. And once we get x by itself, we have our value for x. So what is the multiplicative inverse? In multiplication, the reciprocal of any number is called the multiplicative inverse. And we use this in multiplying and dividing by fractions. So some examples, one half is the multiplicative inverse of two, four thirds the multiplicative inverse of three fourths, and one over a is the multiplicative inverse of a, where a represents any number. So what is the multiplicative identity? The multiplicative identity is one because when we multiply one by any number, we get that number back. So what is the inverse property of multiplication? The inverse property of multiplication just says that the product of number and its multiplicative inverse is always one, or a times one over a equals one. And there are some examples for you to look at. So how do we use the inverse property of multiplication to solve linear equations with rational coefficients? Basically all we're going to do is we're going to use the inverse property of multiplication to help us transform the coefficient in front of x from a rational number to one. And we do this by multiplying the side with the coefficient by the multiplicative inverse and we also have to multiply the other side by the multiplicative inverse and this will get x by itself and the value for x. So in the first example we have 3 fourths c equals 18 and the multiplicative inverse of 3 fourths is 4 thirds so we're going to multiply 4 thirds on both sides so we get c equaling 18 times 4 thirds and we go through some simplification and then we get we get down to the answer being 24. So really what we're doing is we're doing 18 over 1 times 4 over 3. And because there's an 18 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator, we can simplify to 6 times 4, which equals 24. Example 2 is 1 and 1 half s equals 16 and a half. Well, let's change all our proper fractions our mixed numbers into improper fractions. So 1 and 1 half is 3 halves and 16 and a half is 33 over 2. The inverse of 1 and 1 half is 3 is 2 thirds. So we're going to multiply 2 thirds on both sides and we get s equaling 33 over 2 times 2 over 3. Well the 2 in the numerator and the 2 in the denominator cancel each other out. We're left with 33 over 3 which equals 11. And for our last example, we have 2 equals 0.5n. So we divide by 0.5 on both sides, and we get 2 over 0.5 equaling n. And in our little bubble over here, 2 over 0.5 is equal to 2 over 1 half, and that is asking us how many 1 halves are in 2. And there are 4 1 halves in 2. So 2 over 0.5 is equal to 4, which is equal to which is equal to n, and that is it for tonight's video.